On our map today, we can see how the Jordan Valley becomes dry as it moves south toward what is called the Allenby Bridge. Remember that Mary and Joseph are leaving the ancient city called Adam. And this is to where the waters were backed up when the Israelites crossed the river like we saw yesterday, some 20 miles south of here. And so there was an accumulation, a huge accumulation of water. With the flow of the river, some people say it would have made a wall of about two miles long and about 120 feet high. That would have been really impressive for the three million or so Israelites that were walking alongside it into the Promised Land. I propose this is the route that Mary and Joseph walked as they moved south toward the city of Jericho, over the plain. Now this would have been about a 25 mile journey for them. And so this is, would have been a very long day for the family. It would take about eight hours for them to reach their goal, which would be to arrive to Jericho for their fifth night on this journey to Bethlehem. On their way south, Mary and Joseph would have passed in front of the city of Gilgal on the other side of the Jordan River. And Gilgal in the Bible actually refers to several locations. It's actually mentioned about 39 times. But the key location is in the book of Joshua as the place where the Israelites camped after crossing the Jordan River. So it makes sense that it's right here. Gilgal in Hebrew actually means circle of stones. So that's what they built according to the book of Joshua. Mary and Joseph would probably have crossed the river near what is today called the Allenby Bridge. It's just north of what you can see on the map of a place called Bethany, and that would be Bethany beyond the Jordan. In Arabic, it's called al maktats which means baptism or immersion. And like we saw yesterday, that's the traditional site of the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist. And it's been venerated as such for 2,000 years. On the eastern side of the Jordan, we also saw a monastery built, which is called Elijah's Hill, marking the place where he was taken up into heaven. And where about 1400 years ago, the Israelites crossed the Jordan. This town of Bethany on the map is clearly not Bethany near Jerusalem, where Jesus went and stayed with Lazarus and his sisters. But some propose that this Bethany beyond the Jordan actually means house, bet in Hebrew, of the boat. Bethany was probably a little village on the riverbank that was not only a ford, but a place of refreshment for weary pilgrims who were traveling between Perea and Judea. And this would have included Mary and Joseph. On our way toward the plains of Jericho, we saw a large herd of sheep by the road. And looking over there, we saw a shepherd who was working with them. And so we decided to stop and see if he would let us come near his sheep and talk to him. But just watching him, it reminded me of what Carol Hauslander speaks about in her book on Advent. And she says that work is a type of Advent. In fact, it's the most common and daily way the Lord can come into the world. It is a time of waiting. Carol Hauslander actually says that there are Advents in the details of our life, details of immense importance of which life is made up. And first of all, she says it's work, just like the work of this shepherd. She says, unfortunately, production no longer means a man making something that he has conceived in his own heart. No man should ever make anything except in the spirit in which a woman bears a child, in the spirit in which Christ was formed in Mary's womb, in the love with which God created the world. The integral goodness and fittingness of the work of a man's hands or mind is sacred. He must have it in his heart to make it. His imagination must see it and its purpose before it exists in material. His whole life must be disciplined to gain and keep the skill to make it. He must, having conceived it, allow it to grow within him until at last it flows from him and is woven of his life and is the visible proof that he has uttered his fiat, be it done unto me according to thy word. Yes, according to the will of God, as an expression of the love of God. So, it is possible to whisper in wonder and awe, and without irreverence on seeing the finished work, the word is made flesh. Every work that we do should be a part of the Christ forming in us, which is the meaning of our life. 
To it, we must bring the patience, the self-giving, the time of secrecy, the gradual growth of Advent. Thank you for joining us today. And if you come tomorrow on this path with us to Bethlehem, you'll get to know the Bedouin shepherd Yusuf a little bit more than when we met on the way. God bless you, and we're praying for you from the Holy Land as we walk together to welcome the newborn Lord in Bethlehem. Bye.